Hello, and welcome to another episode of Lucid 9. In incident, I incident, inciting incident. Oh, it's like a little tongue twister. But, you know, some stuff was happening, and I was thinking about my past decisions and how there are so many saves. There are, there are a lot of save slots, so I'm thinking, uh, maybe I should start saving at crucial points. So if I come across and you like, go left or go right, we are totally saving. But classes get off to a dreary start is how we're going to begin this episode. Oh, did you realize I want a snack? Damn it. Yeah, he go naps through math. I almost follow suit. The teacher's voice is hypnotic and not in a good way. Elizabeth glares at me through English, probably because the teacher had me recite some Edgar Allan Poe. Oh, yeah. And I found it so stupid that I didn't even try to get the accent right. Aw, Poe's nice, though. Sorry, Your Highness, that we're not all bilingual like your perfect self. Then it's world history. Our teacher arrives in camouflage getup, proudly waving Isamu City flag and screaming at the top of his lungs. Oh, Jesus. Okay, maggots, listen up! You think Skull City? You think that's a bad cakewalk? Well, you're right, because this blessed place has gone soft. Wow, I just... Elizabeth's like my, me's like my, he's like my. Back in my day, we didn't have no study guides. Textbooks, we had to write them ourselves. Upside down, uphill, in the snow, both ways. Okay, give me a sec, I gotta visualize this happening. While my peers seem petrified, I only smile amusingly. If only all classes were like this. None of you have any excuse to get less than an A90? No, it's a 90. Less than a 90 on your test. That 90's a little funny. So help me if I see a single 80, I'll give you a taste of the old days. Now he goes sliding beneath his desk as if he wants to melt into the chair. The, the old days? The teacher's eyes flare with a delight as if he was waiting to be asked. That's right, the old days. I can't, I can't shout. I don't want to scare the dogs. They'd string us up by our ankles over a pit of hungry legs. Okay, come on. Oh, be gone. Eiko squeaks and bears himself under his desk. Do lions even exist in Japan? All right, maggots, let's get this party started. The teacher thrusts a heavy finger at the board, sending the test to each of our desks. What? You've got to 11.25 sissy cents, judgment day. Jesus. With that, he flops on his chair, props his feet on the tabletop, and stuffs his face into a ragged newspaper. I give the test a once over. I should have studied more, but maybe I can bluff the right answers. Oh god, no! What was Europe's rapid colonization of Africa after 1880 driven by? Well, I mean, these are like. Oh, should I save? Oh, god damn it. It's like, it's just a test. But I'm guessing, depending on my answers, we'll. Fine, 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 fine. Fine, we'll do, we'll do a save, okay? Okay, what was Europe's rapid colonization after Africa, of Africa after 1880 driven by? After 1880 driven by? Uh, oh god, I don't even know. Oh, does that, oh, okay, fine. I'm glad I saved then. What does the ancient yin yang Chinese symbol represent? Uh, the Zen card set? Or dualism in which everything is in conflict and unresolvable. Uh, the uh, uh, Zen. Write the correct chronological order of at least three current world religions. Buddhism, Christianity, Islam, Christianity, Buddhism, Islam, Islam, Christianity, Buddhism. Oh God, I don't, I don't know. Um. I wanna. I wanna say. Because, you know, Buddhism monks been around forever. I. But the Quran! Oh, God! Oh! Uh, we're doing this blind! We're just gonna. Uh, Islam! What was the intention of China's great leap forward? They expand Chinese influence, industrialize China's economy, expel Japanese occupation from Korea. Uh, what? Um, 
Um, I want to say expel Japanese. What European practice did colonial Spanish Americans in Comunidia system emulate? Nepotism, mannerism, or primogen? Uh, nepotism? I should really study more. I didn't know there was going to be a test. I glanced around the classroom, gauging the reaction of my peers. They ranged from triumph to utter despair. Well, excuse you, Sasha. Surprisingly, he goes the fastest writer in the world, trumping even Elizabeth. Out of curiosity, I steal a peek at his test. Name? Calling people's names is rude. Date? I'm not dating anyone right now. Oh, God. <laughs> List several ways the Russians prepared for the Cold War. They wore really big coats and took medicine every six hours. Describe how Hitler gained influence in Germany. They produced a lot of chocolate until they were the biggest candy factory in Asia. Oh, is he for real? What major incident, what major event incited the Japanese capitulation during World War II? The nuclear bomb. Oh, he almost got this one, right? Yahiko, time for sign language. He, your answer on question three is wrong. He grins and shoots me a thumbs up. What major event incited the Japanese Population during World War II, the Rigo movie premiere. He raises his eyebrow at me. How's this? I nod encouragingly. Not all his answers will look. Now all his answers will look dumb. That's more consistent. I return to my exam. The last question that remains is a long essay. Oh no. Elaborate one of the following historical themes with at least three specific examples from covered material subjugation of humanity, economic inequality, wealth disparity, role of religion in society. Well, this will be easy. I select the first option and start rambling about how everyone sucks and is unbelievably power hungry. It's the easiest essay I've ever written. I finished with plenty of time to spare. After I handed my test, I take a moment to evaluate my surroundings. But I fail! I. Ugh. Oh, he goes reach the essay. Perfect. He selected the second option the economic gap between wealthy and poor. Let's take a look. I believe that the solution to all the conflicts and stuff between rich people and poor people is that they should try to understand each other. Like, rich people need to realize the hardships of the poor and try to do something about it. And the poor need to understand that not all rich people are the same. That's all he pens before he turns in his test. He completely missed the point of the question. But that was an unusually sober answer considering he's well a ego. Rid of my entertainment, I stare into space and think about nothing as class continues on. Oh god. I'm worried. When the bell ledge rings, everything seems to happen at once. Masaki leaps to her feet, snatches up her backpack, and storms to the classroom door. I hurriedly tap on her shoulder. Where are you off to? Hmm? To track down Rue, of course. You sound like you're stalking prey. Who says I'm not? Oh, Jesus. And obviously with no intention of slowing down, she barrels out of the room with a single tap. Purpose. To test. The test is still in my mind. As she does so, a group of girls race into the room, crowding around Elizabeth. Is this you, Elizabeth? You won the art contest? Gosh, is there anything you aren't good at? It's such an amazing painting. You're so cool. Elizabeth smiles at her groupies, unusually gentle. Thank you. She coughs delicately. <laughs> oh, sorry, my throat is feeling a bit dry. Oh, stay right here. I'll go get some tea for you. Tea? Hurry up, don't keep her waiting. Elizabeth smiles in appreciation as the groupie sprints out of the classroom. The whole display just makes me want to gag. Oh jeez. Then Masato comes roaring in. I cringe, expecting yet another sales pitch for the track team. But he crashes past me, grabbing one of my hapless classmates. You! Unfortunate classmate. Who, <laughs> me? You started a bitter family feud, you ignorant whelp. Oh jeez. What? I've never seen you in my life. You mess with my little bro. You mess with me. Come here. Masato seizes the student's ear and drags him into the hallway, leaving a trail of gossiping students in his way. How oh, weird. I never knew Masato had a little brother. See ya, dude. What? Where are you going? To see applicants for my amazing club, of course. You interested in joining? It's called the Happy Club. Suddenly, I'm very glad that I have other plans. Have fun with that. He only beams. <laughs> I will beam. <laughs> and with that, he properly disappears. That was oddly hectic for an ordinary school day. Woo! At least it's convenient. Now I'm left to my own devices. Yanni. Alright, where is my phone so I can keep it out of the time? Alright, Akita, it's time to have a few words with you. Akita. 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 Oh, the lady. The girl. Sorry. 
I enter the cafeteria with laser focus, searching for the familiar head of blonde hair. I vaguely notice Yahiko gesturing exaggerately to a few skeptical students, but I pass over them. After a few minutes of circling in the cafeteria, I still haven't caught sight of my intended target. Seperoni, Sarge. Seperoni? I quickly whip around and come face to face with the object of my search, a bright-eyed girl bubbling with energy, as demonstrated by her tendency to bounce on the balls of her feet. Hey, Akita. It's been a while, Sarge. I can't help but sigh. I can sense that the ensuring conversation will be a very long and difficult one. My name isn't Sarge. I never said it was. Then why do you keep calling me Sarge? Because Sarge is short for Sergeant. She stops, as if that's an adequate explanation. And, and I'm hungry, so let's get some food. She skips to the buffet table to swipe her card. This girl, it's impossible to get a straight answer out of her. Akia is an interesting case. She and Rue joined drama club last year. That's how they became friends, or so they claim. It didn't take long for them to become close, and this year, they're rooming together. Akia. Well, if I had to describe her, I'd say she's very spirited doing her own thing, off in her own world, she doesn't really associate with us much, just Rue. She's a bit eccentric, though, I suppose in a refreshing way. I suppose. I'm still freaking out about that test. I feel like it's going to come back and bite me in the butt. When we've gotten our food, Akita makes her way to an obscure corner of the cafeteria and digs through her bag, pulling out a green and white plaid blanket with a flourish. I present to you Annette Diana... Helenson, 17? 17. I crane my neck trying to peek into her bag. Where? Here. She shakes the blanket. The blanket? Oh, don't be rude. How would you feel if Annette, Annette of Diana Helenson, 17, called you the human all the time? Use her name. I'm not going through all the effort just to spare the feelings of an inanimate object. She frowns at me, but gently lays the blanket on the floor. Don't come crying if Annetta Diana Helen Diana Hellingson seventeen ex oh god exacts retribution on you for the grave insult you just made. I'm sure I'll live. Akira only shrugs and settles on the blanket. A few students in the background send us bewildered glances. Why don't we just sit at a table? Why don't we just sit on the ground? Chairs are meant to be sat on. So is the ground. I what? Fine, you sit on the ground, I'll sit at the table. I hear the signs and, oh god, obligingly, obligingly stuffs Annetta, Diana, Hellingson, 17, back into her bag. You know, if Rue and I are like peas in a pod, you'd like this awkward leaf that's growing really far down the stem. I see you all the time, but we never actually hang out. That's not really fair. You chose not to hang out with us. On second thought, I'm not sure if I'll be able to handle Akia on a daily basis. Aw, oh, Sarge, I never said it was your fault. Uh, right. I gather myself as Akita takes a seat beside me and starts to dig in. The ankle incident? Just ask her about the ankle incident and this whole nightmare will be over. Something interesting happened today. Did you pretend that you were a cross-dressing duchess? Oh my god, I love her. What? Guess not. Too bad. That would have definitely been interesting. Most brains have interconnected neurons, but I'm beginning to think that Akita's brain is structured without rhyme or reason. No. Rue tripped and injured her ankle. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> well, I don't think she actually injured it. She was running around on it just a few minutes later. Did you carry her? Yeah. <gasps> Piggyback? Why does that matter? Oh, the healing power of true love. How I envy your bond. You see, love is like antidepressants with herbal infusions. Most of the time, people just get involved so that they feel good, regardless of the actual result. But sometimes, if your bond is truly deep, it can actually physically heal you! Oh my god. Only sometimes, though, like maybe less than 0.0016%. I carried her bridal style, actually. But my bridal style! Ten times the healing power! Ten times the bond! Like a Kovalat bond or Ionic, depending on the properties. Her way of thinking is oppressive. Honestly, I don't even know how she makes these associations. Look, Akita, can you just give me a straight answer? The angle of an answer is irrelevant, since an answer is an abstract concept and therefore is not subject to angles in the first place. 
Right. Did you have anything to do with Rue pretending to injure her ankle? Stir. I plead the fifth. Isn't that American? Oh, right. I plead the 38th. <laughs> I can always sigh at this. Akita definitely had something to do with it. Oh, no! I pushed the button too fast. Look, I know Rue is your friend, but stop trying to matchmake us. Honestly, it's getting a little annoying. Just like how you pretend that you don't notice Rui's feelings? I take back everything I said about Akita being refreshing. She isn't refreshing at all. She's a meddler. Look, it isn't exactly your business. Can you just stay out of it? Oh, but it is my business more than you might think. That sounds ominous. Still, it'll end up hurting Rue. Do you want that? Why would Rue get hurt? Just let me deal with it, okay? It's already complicated enough. It doesn't have to be. This is just too much trouble. Look, Akita, what you're doing will only end up hurting Rue. If you just want to bug me, that's fine, but leave Rue out of it. I scoop up my dishes and leave the table before she has a chance to speak. Maybe it's rude, but I'm not encouraging any delusional fantasies regarding Rue and me. Oh god, I head back to the classroom, spending the rest of lunch period half-heartedly studying. Afternoon classes pass by uneventfully. Elizabeth seems to be in a good mood from the praise of her groupies. She completely ignores me instead of hassling me. Aww. Yahiko is unusually quiet. Even Masaki is all but silent. From her clouded expression, I guess that her discussion with Rui didn't go too well. When the bell rings, I'm almost unsettled at how quiet the day was. The lore of the afternoon seems to settle in every crevice of the classroom, bringing a haze of sleep with it. The teacher's voice slips... Oh god, two in indiscernible drone as every student struggles to keep their eyes open for the few remaining minutes of school. Dursted. Alright, homeroom dismissed. Immediately, everyone bolts to their feet, chatting amicably as they make their way out of the classroom. Only the fourth day of school and we're already sick of it. I guess that's third year for you. And two students are missing. Oh hey, Masati, did you see the new episode of Grover Mecker yesterday? Why, of course, I tuned in to the live stream the moment it opened. Oh wow, it's the unexpected BFFs. So, what did you think? Well, when I saw that President Jay Graves spontaneously... Wait, sorry, no spoilers! You know, since Yama might not have seen it yet. Oh, okay. How exceedingly generous of him. I thought it was entertaining as always. It was the best episode so far, wasn't it? It definitely was. Well, no offense, but I don't think that bar is set very high. What's this, man? Did you get a real girlfriend? What the... Oh, a wild Masato appears. Masato, my man, how is your vengeance? Wait, what? Some punk paid a group of boys to bully Masato's little brother because he hates Masato. But I bet that ma that Masa gave him a taste of his own medicine. Hell yeah, I did. You pick a fight with one Kuragan, you pick a fight with them all, all of them. Wait, won't you get in trouble for hitting him? He'll definitely tattle on you. Blahaha, hit him? Nah, man, I locked him in a room and taught him the... Cluster decomposition theorem. Made him write a paper on it in one sitting. Somehow that sounds a lot more horrifying than just getting beat up. Hi, I don't think we've met. Who are you? I transferred here yesterday. Miss Akikazi Haya at your service. She's super cool. She watches Gover Mecker. She's a model. Ha, that's cool. Name is Masoto Kuga and I'm on the trip team. He stops there. We wait for a moment, expecting a more elaborate introduction. Uh, and? And what? That's all that matters, ain't it? Not the fact that he's the president of the Honors Club, or one of the top students in the school, or a third year. I take it you enjoy track, then? Hell yeah! Track is like water! Without it, you die! Track is like air! Without it, you die! Oh god. Track is like fried chicken! Without it, you die! That's some temptation. Yep, and I'm staying this way, or my name's Yama Ishimoto. That, that was uncalled for. Well, as long as you keep at it, I'm sure you can accomplish anything. Says every cliche movie ever. They ignore me and firmly shake hands. Looks like she's becoming friends with everyone. Everyone except Rue, ironically enough. So how do y'all know each other? She, Yama, and Rue are childhood friends, actually. Whoa, real? Why ain't Rue here, then? An awkward silence falls between Masaki and I with a hapless Yahiko in the middle. Huh? Why did you mention it? She should be here by now. You don't think she got called for cleanup duty, do you? 
We don't have cleanup duty. He go. The school pays for janitors. Oh, that explains a lot. How many years has he been at the school again? Hold on. Someone give me a straight answer. Where's Rue? Misaki clears her throat and steals herself. We're not in the best of terms at the moment, but I'm working to resolve the issues as soon as possible. You sound like you're debug debugging some code. And some. Some code, Miki. But it's true, we're not getting along particularly well. Masato inches away from her, suddenly cautious. Huh, I see. See what? You guys were just getting along. Masato turns to Miki with a grave expression. I don't know, man. Something about you seems sus. That's kind of harsh, but at least you told her up front? What? I should have seen it earlier, but yeah, you're too nice. Don't you work in the modeling industry? Aren't you supposed to be cutthroat and all that? It's not like I'm some kind of dastardly mastermind. Then what's the deal with you and Rue? I'd like to know that myself. She's the one ignoring me. They both stare at each other down. None of us budge. Ah oh, hell. I don't know. I'm a, I'm going to track. He strides out of the classroom without any farewells or apologies. That was strange. Sorry about that. Misaki Mas is not usually like that. Maybe he ate something funny. I doubt it. Well, this just got awkward. First, Rue right now. Misato's punishing Miki out. Well, oh, pushing, not punishing. Pushing Miki out into the cold. Usually, they're the warmest and most inclusive people I know, but this time. Staring. 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 Something saved me. Anything. Oh, God, my phone. Huh? That was convenient. Ooh. Yama Ishimoto. Divine Master! I'll go ahead and assume that this is from Shugure. Cafe de la Pax, 5 p.m. Do not dare to be late or I shall dock your pay. Also, I insist you share your location with me. Wait, isn't this on a volunteer basis? What kind of pay am I getting? And the final message. Wait a minute. Did your phone even support location sharing? The answer is immediate. Yes. But it's so old. Some implements improve with age, Ishiyama, unlike your brain, I predict. Why am I working with this woman again? Whatever, I mashed a few buttons to share my location with her. It's not like she'll break into my house and steal my stuff, right? Since she's a detective in official capacity, she'd get into a lot of trouble. Wait, why am I legitimately entertaining this idea? Ugh, this woman terrifies me! Dude, why are you smiling? Huh? Smiling? Grinning, as a matter of fact. Grimacing, not grinning. There's a big difference. Sorry, but something came up. Turns out that I have to go. Oh, that's fine. I have my club to see to. Oh, you have a club? Yeah, I just started it. Wanna join? It's called the Happy Club. Oh, sorry, but my work schedule limits my ability to participate in clubs. Oh, well, that makes sense. Wow, smooth. She should go into politics. Who in their right mind would actually want to join a group called the Happy Club? I kind of want to join. Then, ladies and gentle fellows, I shall be off. See ya. Bye, Yahiko. You too, Misaki. Have a good rest of the day, Yama. And with that, we manage to barely salvage the awkward atmosphere as we go our separate ways. I pull up... I pull up this Café de la Pix on my phone and find that it's one... Yeah, it's on the same street as GFC. Well, that makes this an easy walk, unless, of course, she's referring to the other Café de la Pix, which is on the faraway border of District 8. Might as well try the closest one first. Sugar Ray doesn't seem like the type to go out of her way just to make me miserable. Or rather, she doesn't seem like the type to inconvenience herself. There's, oh, there are cliche, no, not cliche, there are cliques. There are cliques of ac academy students throughout the streets. Girls immersed in superficial gossip and guys exchanging ridiculous stares. I pass by a handful of police, oh, I heard the brigade. Police officers on the way, they nod courteously, but there's a shadow to their evaluating gazes. I keep my stride long and my steps quick as I round the corner to the denoted rendezvous point. Ooh, excuse me. When I first see the place, ugh, I have to double check my phone to make sure I didn't take a wrong turn somewhere. By the quaint, lovely name, I was expecting some charming variation of the polished, established Buckstar coffee house. Instead, I met with the definition of modest. Chipped paint, dusty windows, and a swaying sign with three broken letters. Maybe this is Sugar's way of extracting vengeance? I take a deep breath before I enter the cafe. Oh, wow. 
Surprisingly, the place is really decent on the inside. Sophisticated and sleek, the array of elegant furniture is punctured by the black grand piano along the far wall of the cafe. A delectable smell of butter and sugar drips from the counter of the shop, where several intricate glass displays boast rows of unique pastries reminiscent of a fairy tale world. Welcome! May I take your order? The cashier greets me with a smile, drawing me to the front counter. Wait a minute, isn't she... <gasps> You're... Come to think of it, I've never seen where she goes after class ends. Of all people, it would be you. Consider it, it your lucky day. Just give me your order. Huh, this situation is just too good to pass up. Elizabeth, a cashier, do enlighten me. Why would such a wealthy, empowered young woman stoop to making lattes and washing dishes? We're work experience, obviously. Every successful person comes from humble beginnings. Oh, wait. <laughs> I might believe her, but by the way she's averting her eyes, it's suspicious. So why didn't your parents get you some cushy internship at your dream corporation? You know, some people want to earn their success instead of being spoon-fed by their parents. But being spoon-fed is so much easier. I've learned by now that comments like these will tick off... Eh. By now that comments like these will tick off Elizabeth more than actual insults. Sure enough, it works. You're insufferable. What's that? I should complain to customer service about an abusive cashier. Just order already! As I lazily glance over the pastry displays, a flicker of motion catches my eye. Ooh, car lights. That's weird. As, uh, it's the girl who always hangs around Elizabeth, an ordinary student settled in the corner, elbow propped on the table. Eyes glinting in amusement as she absentmindedly twirls a pencil between her fingers. Her back is slouched, her smile carefree, but there's something that seems a little odd about her. Elizabeth seems to notice my switch of attention and clears her throat. Are you going to order, or are you going to waste space like always? A brunette girl. I'll give him a moment, Beth. I glance at the book that's lying open-faced on her table. Advanced English Syntax and Grammatical Principles, Version 3. That's the same text that I have for English. She must also be a third year, but in a different class. Head tilted slightly, eyebrows raised just barely. I get the impression that she's studying me. Just as hard as I'm studying her. Who are you? Isn't it courteous to introduce yourself before you demand my identity? As your buddy Lizzie has probably told you, courtesy isn't my strong suit. Oh, then what is it? Nothing. Just a bit of friendly advice, Beth, but you may want to watch your step around this one. What makes you say that? Why, he's figured you out. This... Elicits an unusual reaction from Elizabeth, bitten lips, fiddling hands, and an anxious shift of the eyes. Odd, I don't recall figuring out anything. Well, Yama, why don't you give Beth a little glance? Her eyes are twinkling at me challengingly, like she knows I don't know, but wants me to figure it out. Why would she do that? Why isn't she taking Elizabeth's side? But fine, I'll apologize, just don't tell anyone. Well, now I really have no clue what's going on, but I might as well go along with it. Yeah, why wouldn't I? Oh, she seems at a loss for words. I can't help but grin. You will pay me? You know I can't. That catches me off guard, but thankfully I'm able to hide my expression just in time. Interesting. She can't pay. She's not a rich kid. That can only mean that she's not as high and mighty as she pretends to be. Maybe her spending is restricted by her parents, or maybe she's legitimately poor. This just gets better and better. So, it's that big of a deal if everyone finds out? Don't even think about it. Yeah, definitely not the rich, perfect princess that everyone was led to believe she was. Say pretty please with the cherry on top. Pretty please with the cherry on top. As begging goes, it's subpar, but I decided to let it go. I don't plan on making her life miserable. It's more of a power thing. With blackmail hanging over her head, she'll finally stop following me. I turn from the counter to survey the past pastry. Pastry case. Elizabeth Soto's drew ah. Shoulders drop in relief. Jesus. The girl at the table loses interest and returns to filling with her pencil. You never did tell me your name. Am I obliged to? As you said, it's common courtesy. Now when did I say I was courteous? She brushes her pencil into her bag and slings it over her shoulder, winking at Elizabeth. What is with all the cars? I'll see you later, Beth. 
is so weird. And Yama, play nice. She floats out of the cafe without another word, shutting the door softly behind her. Come to think of it, how does she know my name? Eh, she probably learned it from Elizabeth. Said Elizabeth rings up my order of three pastries and a smoothie that I spend a few minutes pondering the strange girl. What's her name? Why do you want to know? Is it really that big of a deal? Elizabeth sighs in clear exasperation. Her name is Natsuki Tanaka. Now you can hail her. Congratulations. I lean over the counter until my face is an inch from hers. What makes you think she's the one I want to hit on? <gasps> Elizabeth glances away, instinctively disturbed by my proximity. Right as I'm about to feel a rush of triumph, I catch a slight scent. Country lavender with a hint of vanilla. It's oddly magnetic. Oh my god, I'm suddenly bulldozed by a sensory onslaught. I can see the curl of her long lashes, the gleam of her eyes, every perfectly tapered point of every hair, the subtle curve of her lips. I stagger backward, fight against the images in my head. I need to get a hold of myself. This is Elizabeth. She's always been pretty. Why let it mess with me now? Hormones. In a shaky attempt to cover my slip up, I shove a bill forward. Keep the change. Elizabeth elegantly plucks the bill from my hand, and before I can process what's happening, she's wrapped her fingers around my collar, pulling me forward. For a few painful seconds, she stays there. She stays there, her lips an inch from my jawline. Keep what change? You didn't give me enough in the first place. She releases me, and I glance at the bill I've handed her. Only a thousand yen? Crap, she's right. I feel a blush flare at my cheeks as I slide another bill to her. The corners of her mouth pull up just slightly. Careful, wouldn't want everyone to know that you're actually poor, would you? Yeah, yeah. She generally amused as she passes me my order and bustles, bustles off to make my smoothie. I hate to admit it, but she doesn't look bad when she smiles. Ugh, get a grip, Yama. This is the Elizabeth who hounded you all of last year. The Elizabeth who keeps butting into things that aren't her business. The Elizabeth who believes that everything is in her control. That Elizabeth! Jesus. Back to my senses, I select a butter croissant and throw the other two pastries in my backpack. There's not much to do, so I follow Elizabeth to the blenders. Apparently she's recovered because her face is set to its default disapproving scowl. What are you doing? Eating a croissant? Stop staring! You know, your workstation has windows for a reason. And that reason is not for you to stare at me like a pervert. What about a Myron fanboy? Really, Sasha? You gotta, you gotta scratch yourself right now? Blimey! Blimey! Blimey, you're insufferable! I can't help but chuckle as a tinge, as a ting of English leaks through her accent. So are you actually from England? Why are you asking me all these questions? I'm bored and you're taking a long time to make my smoothie. Maybe I wouldn't take so long if you would stop distracting me. Maybe you need to learn how to actually focus. She awkwardly slams the lid down the blender and starts it up. The roar of the machine blurs the sound between us. Oh dear me! I would like some tea and crumpets! Elizabeth's shoulders tighten in clear annoyance. Tally ho, old sport! What say you to some fish and chips? The blender picks up speed until it begins to whine. The weather is positively ghastly today, is it not? Then the blender stops. Elizabeth wordlessly pours the mixture into a cup and caps it, handing it over the window. Firstly, I was born and raised in Japan, just like everyone else. Secondly, just because you're not bilingual doesn't mean you have to mock people who are. She turns the wrapper off the end of a straw and sticks it roughly into the smoothie. Have a nice day. Come again. With that, she strides into the back room, leads me by myself. I actually feel uneasy as I settle into a corner. I expect Elizabeth to lash out at me, just like every other time. But she was calm, honest, e even if clearly annoyed. Is her heritage a weak spot? Did I bring up something that should have been left alone? Furthermore, why am I letting it bother me? She never showed me mercy. Not on the days where I just wanted to be left alone. The days where the, uh, the days where life almost wasn't worth it. Should I do the same? Oh, hold on. As I bite into my croissant, hoping to distract myself with its taste, the door of the cafe swings open. She's here, and it's been like 30 minutes, so we're gonna save. Okay, okay, so we're gonna save this. This is the before the test, so we're gonna save here. We're gonna do, we're gonna do that, because that's before test, and that's that. Alright, alright, save in here. Shit went down. It was great. Alright. Two.